YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here back in Total War Attila. And uh, I know some of you will be like, Air, where's some of the variety? We've seen a lot of Attila. Well, on my live stream earlier today, you would have seen some Medieval 2 as well. And I'm just showing a lot of Attila at the moment because there's, uh, number one, that's where all my campaigns are at. And number two, uh, there was some new content. And anytime there's new content, I owe it to you all to show you that. There will continue to be a variety of videos throughout the week. So keep your heads up. I can tell you, you will probably either see some Napoleon or Empire Total War this week, as well as some continued other older Total Wars mixed in with Attila campaign. And eventually we may even try like an older campaign, not a lot of them at once. And I will certainly keep covering Attila campaign. I actually really enjoy the campaign in Attila a lot. It's probably my favorite right now out of all the Total War games. Rome 2 probably being a close second. Um, that's just me. I'm not saying that that means that they're the best campaigns in Atul. I'm just saying that's what I'm enjoying the most right now. So, what I wanted to cover with you today is uh, the Celtic Culture Pack that recently released. Let you see what's in it. Is it for you? Does it do what you hoped it did? Um, and basically just give you some information about it, my thoughts. So, Celtic Culture Pack adds three new factions. You're going to have the Abdanians, uh, who start off on... Uh, I guess, isn't this Hibernia, which is currently Ireland? If I get some of the geography wrong, forgive me. They don't teach a whole lot about European geography, honestly, in some of our classes. And then when I would have had it, it was probably about 16 to 17 years ago when I was in high school. I certainly never studied it in college because I was an engineer, and geography doesn't mean much for an engineer. Anyway, uh, so Ebdonians, the Picts, which I think are in modern-day Scotland. And then you've got the Caledonians, which I don't know where Scotland starts and northern England ends, or northern Britain, whatever you call it. Again, forgive my geography, but up here in the northern what is modern day UK area. So I don't know everything about these uh, tribes and their history and all that kind of stuff. I wish I could tell you more, I just really don't know it. So let's see what they do. The Abdonians have uh, in the cultural trait, so for all Celts, you're gonna have swift spoils and let's see what that gives you. It's minus 15 movement speed reduction in a raiding stance. So that's one of the penalties of the raiding stance now is your, I think your units maybe have some speed reduction. So they get less speed reduction when raiding. Their raiding income in neutral territory is 200%, which is big. Raiding income in enemy territory is 200%, so also big. Um, so basically these guys are going to excel at raiding in the campaign. Uh, I say these guys, any of the Celts. And then all units have guerrilla deployment. So that, again, all these factions have these traits. So I'm not going to cover it twice with the other ones. So... The Abdonians, the Caledonians, and the Picts all have these traits. Now, specific to the Abdanians, or Abdonians, however you say it, their sacking and looting income is 75% higher, which is very nice. And they have a plus 100 income for every 10% damage caused to settlements during a battle. That is pretty cool. <laughs> so basically these guys are going to excel whenever you're sacking, looting, burning, and otherwise pillaging your barbarian self to uh, happiness on Roman glut. It's pretty much how that's going to work. So, the Picts, cool looking faction uh, chief there too, like, like the helmet and the axe, like, let me ask you a question, brother. Um, so, let's see. <laughs> Children of the Night, um, let's see, enables night battles on land and at sea. Well, that's cool, so every army can do night battles right away. Very interesting. And then plus nine morale during night battles. Wow, so these guys like to sneak up on you. They're like the Freddy Krueger of the Celts, so to speak. Very nice, I like that. Caledonians, and uh, let's take a look what they got here. So, Dancing Blades. Agent action cost minus 20%, success chance plus 25%, and agent recruitment cost minus 30%. So these guys are agent focused apparently. And their faction leader can only be thinking one thing at this moment. My gosh, look at my awesome red hair and release the hounds. <laughs> Very cool indeed. So, what do I think of these factions? Uh, let's see, initial challenge is all normal. Uh, they're going to be a lot of fun to play with in campaign. I think these factions are going to add some extra flavor if you want a slightly different type of campaign to play. They're not going to be wildly different than Germanic ones, but they will have different units, um, a slightly different culture, a little bit different uh, attributes, stuff like that. I could totally see this being worth your while when you look at the DLC, and I think that it costs like seven-something American dollars. Um, I, For me, that part would be worth it, the campaign piece of it. I'm happy with what they did here. However, I have some uh, some reservations about this DLC on the multiplayer side. Again, 
From a campaign standpoint, I like what they did. I like these factions. I look forward to playing one of them. Um, uh, again, I have not played them. So if someone's played them and you have feedback on what it's like to play as them, you can let me know. But from everything I can see, it seems like it would be a lot of fun. And it looks like something that I would, I personally would want. Um, so let's take a look at uh, what they look like from a multiplayer standpoint. Now, I have some severe reservations about these factions from a multiplayer standpoint. Now, recently in patch one, the German factions were all basically powerhouses. And they are still very strong. Uh, they're not as strong. And to be honest, I kind of want to leave things alone for a little while. Let's play patch 2. Let's get some thoughts together and try and make patch 3 even better. Um, but all the Celtic factions, to be honest, really suck in multiplayer. Um, and does that mean you're never going to win a battle with them? No. But when you think about it, all of them add like all these new units, which is great. And some of them are very similar to Germanic units. That's fine. I don't have anything. I mean... A cheap spear unit on any faction is pretty much going to be the same thing. I'm okay with stuff like that. You got new names, new uh, skins, all that kind of stuff. Again, it's all fine. Some of the units are pretty unique and very neat. I, I like it. Um, but all of them are infantry units. Well, air isn't that cool. I mean, everybody's always playing cavalry on here. Infantry, yes. Again, in campaign, that'll be quite fun uh, that the infantry is that. But when you come to a multiplayer, a faction that relies heavily on infantry is not going to fare so well in multiplayer because cavalry dominates everything. Uh, patch 2 has not changed anything about the fact that cavalry absolutely mauls infantry, with the only exception being like very powerful spears with expert charge defense braced against them, which is extremely hard to pull off. So I, I see that the Celtic factions are going to suffer greatly in multiplayer. Uh, however, even though they suffer, you can have some fun, and I've already tried it, and it was pretty fun. Um, they can deploy anywhere, and you can basically just try and have some fun. If you're not caring about losing, and you want to just have a good time, win or lose, uh, you can take one of these factions, deploy crazy all around your enemy, and go on like some crazy ambush. And it's pretty entertaining. I will give it credit for that. But from a competitive standpoint, if you're like, ooh, do I need to buy these units in order to stay relevant in multiplayer? No. Um, in fact, I would say that these factions add very little to multiplayer from a standpoint of what will be useful. Um, adding to it in the sense that you can play them in campaign, so why not in multiplayer? Great. Personally, I think there's... I like having a variety of factions in multiplayer. However, if you're not going to do a great job of balancing them, then I would recommend, actually moving forward, that CA consider a couple of things. And this is just constructive criticism. I'm not trying to be mean. One... These guys look great in campaign. There was really no reason to add them to multiplayer. Um, and you probably should have just continued to focus on uh, uh, basically the units or the factions that are already in multiplayer. If you look at like the Burgundians, the Langobards, and the others, they all added a little something to multiplayer. Plus, they had a Germanic based roster, so putting them in multiplayer adds just a smidge more variety because all of them are somewhat viable. These guys are very challenging to use in multiplayer. Again, you may be taking this the wrong way. Air, whatever, I've already played these guys and I've won battles with them. You, you must just suck. Well, I mean, I'm not going to disagree with you that sometimes I definitely suck, but the uh, these guys really aren't that good in multiplayer, and, and they're a little disappointing that they weren't balanced in a little bit. And the main reason lies right here. One melee cavalry and it's sword armed. You have no way to stop enemy cavalry with these guys. And you might be well, they have skirmisher cav, none of which have Parthian shot, and all of which are very expensive. Um, this round shield... Raider is a cool unit and has some potential, and I'll, I'll kind of talk through this. There's a few problems here, though, that make this impossible to really pull off. The Round Shield Raider is a heavy skirmisher cav. That's good. It's heavy. The impact damage from them is pretty extreme. So they can serve the role of still threatening enemy infantry, and they have very powerful javelins, five of them. Here's the downside. They're expensive. Well, that's okay. They have five very powerful javelins, and they're heavy. They probably shouldn't be cheap. 70 is their speed. So basically any cavalry on the field can catch these guys and they don't have Parthian shot. Which means that you're going to immediately get forced into a cav engagement and destroyed. Utterly destroyed. So, I'm curious, for anybody who knows, can you tell me what weapon type that these guys use in melee? Is it a heavy spear? If not, it should be a heavy spear, in my opinion. And the reason I say that is because then you could at least try to do a little skirmishing with them. And then the heavy spear would at least allow you to cause some damage in um, melee because these guys are heavy, they have decent health, 
and they would have a heavy spear. So that makes some type of cav unit. It would be kind of expensive. Um, or don't give them the heavy spear. Give them Parthian shot and increase their speed slightly, like up to say even just 80. Um, and then these lighter ones over here, increase their speed all the way to like the, the very light, its speed should be 110 in my opinion, and so should other bow cav. And then uh, the mounted spear raiders here, increase theirs to 100. Give them something to work with. Um, and without Parthian shot, you really have a very difficult time going after enemy cav. Now, I've talked about what I don't like about these factions from a multiplayer standpoint. Let me tell you what I do like. Very cheap crossbows. A lot of potential here when on flaming shot and stuff. They do not have uh, uh, barrage or precision shot, but they cost 200 talents. You can't hardly go wrong. Uh, Celtic bows, very weak, very crappy missile damage, but um, very cheap at the same time. So potentially helpful. And then there's a lot of uh, infantry, like I said. So you get a nice variety of axe infantry, melee infantry, berserkers, all that kind of stuff. So, And there's some extra warhound units if you, if you all into that kind of thing. I don't see any of them that are going to be particularly amazing, but there's extra warhounds. And, and honestly, this melee cav right here is pretty dang good when it comes to hurting enemy infantry. It's just pretty dang crappy at stopping enemy cavalry, which is a huge key in winning in, a, in an Attila multiplayer battle. Now, I've covered the base of the Celts. Now let's go through each faction and tell you what sets them apart from each other. And we'll start off here with the Caledonians, because alphabetically it comes first. From a general standpoint, you have access to a Celtic war, which is basically a Germanic noble, or both these units are basically a Germanic noble, Celtic noble, Celtic warlord, pretty much the same thing. So high health, good armor, low attack, solid melee, def or melee attack, um, and pretty crappy everything else, but cheap. Uh, very standard from what we've seen on a Germanic Noble, expect similar results. Noble Archers and Royal Archers, when I, when I first saw this, I was like, cool, they put an Archer unit as a general, man, that, that'll kind of vary things up. And then I got to looking and I'm like, hmm. So at 500, I only get 15 ammunition, it's only 150 range, and only 35 missile damage, and I'm supposed to be okay with this because maybe they have higher melee attack and health. Okay, great, 132 health. Okay, that's that's not a light. I mean, it's great for an archer, but with only 20 melee attack and no melee defense and armor, I'm still going to die horribly um, in a melee engagement. So I'm not sure how helpful this unit is, and I'm not sure that I would ever put my general in it. And if you come over here and look to... Um, I don't know about rate of fire. I haven't compared it to anything else. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? What's, what is it I'm looking for here? They don't have a missile block chance up for some reason. That's annoying. They probably don't have a good missile block chance, which means that if you're going to use your general as an archer, he probably ought to be a good one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like 200 range, more missile damage. So yes, uh, these guys have a lot of health. Both of them are very similar between the noble archers and the royal archers, but both of them, in my opinion, end up being a royal fail and a noble fail, uh, respectively, uh, because they just... I don't see these guys serving a real purpose. If I'm wrong, let me know, but I, I just don't see it happening. Now, from a spear infantry standpoint, you get a, an interesting variety with the Caledonians, and that's where their kind of specialty lies. They have extra spear units. Almost all factions are going to have, or all the Celt factions should have Celtic levy, Celtic spears, and Celtic spearmen. And then you're going to see these uh, Katarian Brigade and Horse Whisperers. Now, these guys are pretty creepy. They spend a lot of time standing behind horses, whispering sweet nothings into their ear because they can't get a date with the women. Okay, that was bad ear. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. It's just a weird name. I no idea why these guys have the weird name. Uh, if you feel like uh, trying to explain to yourself, have fun. Uh, a very powerful spear unit, though, uh, with pretty nice stats, very good health, armor, a solid melee defense, a pretty good charge bonus, actually. And these guys do have the heavy spear, so they're going to have an extra 30 melee damage and melee attack versus cavalry, so quite nice. Uh, same thing with the Katarian Brigade. They should have the heavy spear, and, of course, their stats are just slightly lower. I uh, have expert charge defense and the ability to brace, so these guys are some pretty serious spear support. I don't know about the Celtic Spearmen, whether or not they have the heavy spear or not. Um, if they do, that would be good, and I'm thinking the cheaper units probably do not have the heavy spear, but I do not know. I haven't looked. I don't know how to get into the database, and I really wish that... I, I don't see why we can't come in here into the encyclopedia and have all that information available, like weapon type um, and melee, weapon type for missile, like all that stuff, shield type. Well, they, they might as well just make it available in here. It'd be a very nice addition, actually. Um, so that's spear infantry, and, and again, the Caledonians are going to have more spear infantry than any of the other factions. Uh, Celt factions, I should say. Sorry. 
Celtic band, um, to me, honestly, they just look like Freeman. Um, that's what they appear to be, to me at least. Uh, pretty good attack and damage for their price, but obviously terrible health, morale, and basically everything else. Um, so, meat shield, basically. Celtic Warband is also going to be a meat shield unit, except that they come with Frenzy. They cost a little more, uh, but the Frenzy may allow them to cause some extra damage. Their health is considerably better, uh, but again, everything else is considerably crappy. Celtic Wood Runners. Cool name. Uh, these guys are going to be more like Roman infantry, though weaker. Uh, and what's really funny about these guys is that clearly a real salesman put together this unit. Uh, basically, up here you get to summarize three things about the unit that you should be aware of, and all of them are negatives. <laughs> that, that's usually what interests you in using a unit in battle, right? Let's see, so I'm looking for units. Uh, what, what do these guys have? Poor, poor, poor. This definitely seems like a solid choice. <laughs> Maybe you could have at least said something good about them here. <laughs> so, poor armor piercing damage, poor armor, and poor morale. Great, so you get three bad things. What's good about them? Well, their melee damage is solid, and they have spear wall. Poor missile block chance, though, is... Or, it actually, doesn't say they have a poor missile block chance. Uh, let's see what it is. Yeah, it's not real great. It should list it in here as well. Should. 25%, so... Yeah, okay-ish, and it should get better in, um, in wall. But anyway, that's them. You got Scotha's Teachers here, which is kind of a special unit. Uh, I think they're women, and they're also a Berserker unit, and really a pretty good unit. Uh, there's few of them per unit, half, but if you can get these guys into an infantry fight, or sorry, these fine young ladies into an infantry fight, they are, um, they are actually pretty powerful. And going Berserk as a trait is kind of handy, because if they go Berserk, you should immediately drop Frenzy. Uh, because they're going to stay fresh regardless. Or if you drop Frenzy and then they go Berserk, it's also good because, again, while they're Berserk, they are fresh and it really is helpful. They also have Rapid Advance, which can be helpful in trying to get them into combat quickly, along with, of course, like all the other units, they have Gorilla Deployment. And most units for the Kelths seem to have, or many of them seem to have, um, Ignore Terrain and other stuff that can be handy. You have Celtic Warriors here. Um, the Celtic Warriors, uh, overall, pretty solid unit. Again, they're going to be more... This is a little more offensive unit. Their health is a little lower. Their attack and um, damage is quite good. And then they have Frenzy. And then you got the Fianna here, which is going to be, again, a little more Romanesque type of unit, as in high health, decentish armor, um, solid defense, and a shield wall. So some of their units are offensive. Some of them are defensive, giving them a nice mix of melee infantry. From an axe standpoint, you're going to have these Celtic Axe Band, which are probably very similar to Germanic Band. All axes took a plus 5 bonus versus infantry in the last patch, so they will be slightly better. Um, but again, be careful, as most of them have a poor missile block chance. These guys say good missile block chance, though. I wonder what they mean by good. 50%? It's actually not bad. So these guys could be pretty handy uh, from an offensive standpoint. Celtic Berserk Berserkers, of course, of course these guys are going to have a poor missile block chance. Uh, they can go Berserk is basically the biggest difference here, and again, when a unit is Berserk, it's impetuous and it's fresh, meaning that its morale won't falter, and it's going to stay fresh, which means it will fight more effectively while other units are exhausted. You got Celtic Axe Warriors, which are going to be a little bit stronger, more potent version of some of the other stuff you've seen. Uh, let's, let's see if they maintain the Missile Block Chance. No, so apparently this is an Axe unit that has specifically a good Missile Block Chance. Interesting. And then you got Caledonian Axemen. Um, they have an average missile block chance, apparently. Good armor. Let's see, let's see. So stats-wise, stats, stats -wise, they have more melee attacks. They'll be landing more hits. These guys are going to be best used against highly armored units, not against units who have a high attack. Um, you'd want to use them against um, Protectores Domestici, Armagiri Defensores, Legio, Armored Legio. Those types of units would be a better use for a, a unit like this. Whereas if they go head to head with like uh, Palatina Defectors, Elite Palatina, Sarmatian Warband, Gothic Warband, that's not going to be a pretty picture for most of these units. Just to kind of give you an idea on where to use them. Uh, Archer wise, they have quite a few options. Uh, I don't know if any of these are particularly good. The Celtic bows you've seen, I mean, they're just cheap bows. Same thing here with Celtic Archers. The real difference is just you add rapid advance and a little bit of ammo. None of their guys have even 45 base damage, so all of these archers, uh, these 575 are certainly going to be worthless. You get a lot of ammo and precision shot, but 35 missile damage is redonkulous. I don't understand why that was done. Um, archer base damage needs to be at least 45, I think, for it to be of any value whatsoever. 
Um, and it seems like elite archers maybe could pick up the 55 damage or something. I, I just, this doesn't make much sense to me uh, why you would do this. So this unit's very expensive and I mean, excellent rate of fire, great. Don't see how that's going to pay back, but maybe some people think it will. It is a lot of ammo, I'll give you that, and they can snipe. But again, uh, probably not super useful from a multiplayer standpoint. We've mentioned that the Celtic crossbows, the best thing about them is they're cheap. you got Highland or Celtic skirmishers and Celtic brigands, just your pretty average um, skirmishers, nothing special. Uh, more uh, more Mayor cavalry, or however you pronounce that. Again, going to be nice against infantry, and definitely okay for the price in that respect. The best thing about these cavalry is that they have the encourage ability, and so some of the cheap infantry you have around may be able to be supported by these guys if your general's elsewhere. Celtic Cavalry Skirmishers, Mounted Spear Raiders, uh, and of course Round Shield Raiders. Round Shields, I like that they have the heavy trait, but they're going to be very challenging to use without Parthian Shot. None of these units have Parthian Shot. Uh, once you start up at the level of the Round Shield Raiders, you get a Javelin that is extremely damaging. It has 50 armor piercing damage, and uh, a very nice bonus for Cavalry and Elephants at 30. So, again, why have we not put Parthian Shots on these units? It, it gives the Celt faction something that is useful now in in battles. They're not particularly fast, but at least giving them Parthian shot allows you a chance to kite away. It's very hard to throw a javelin and then kite away because the turn time is so slow and the other cav unit will enter a charge speed and you will never get away. So it's kind of frustrating that Skirmisher Cav remains completely worthless in Attila, almost exclusively worthless. Um, and it's too bad because the Celt factions really need the Skirmisher Cav to be good, especially this unit. Um, so that's going to be the main holdback. Anyway, that's the Caledonians. Let's give a quicker run through. Now that you've seen some of the base units, we'll run through the other factions real quick. So the Abdanians. Um, the main general uh, difference up here at General is just that you have King's Fianna. This Cav unit is going to be quite good versus infantry. Not very good against cavalry, although it does come with two 100 damage javelins that have 50 armor piercing, so potentially great if you can get those uh, deployed before battle. Uh, in an infantry standpoint, a, a few differences. Uh, you still have Skadis Teachers, Fianna, Celtic Warlords, all these base units. The main difference is they have Gallo Glasses and King's Warband. Gallo Glasses are a Romanesque type unit in the sense that they have high health, again decent armor, uh, and a shield wall. Uh, they also have the Steady ability. And then the King's Warband uh, is going to be, an, again, a, a similar unit, but with better stats. Um, so it, they're, a, they're a sturdy mainline infantry unit that's not great uh, at attack, but pretty steady. Um, and as far as axes, you got this Celtic Axe Band, again, that has the, uh, the good missile block chance, which is probably the unique feature about them. Celtic Berserkers, again. And then I think we've already seen the Celtic Axe Warriors, nothing new with the Archers, the Crossbowmen. In the Skirmisher Department, you get a little bit of something different. The Abdani uh, have, or Abdani, however you say it, have very nice Skirmishers. Whether or not they'd be worth it in multiplayer, I doubt it. But uh, these guys have 10 uh, 90 damage Javelins, which not bad Javelins here. 20 armor piercing, rapid advance, that's quite a few Javelins for that price. These Kerns, however, have 12 100 damage, 50 armor piercing Javelins with a 30 bonus versus elephants and cav. Very expensive unit here, very expensive, but extremely good armor and uh, a good shield. So I don't know that you could ever make these guys worth it. This uh, right, uh, dumb, re, dumb, hun? I don't even know how to say these guys, whatever. <laughs> the awesome skirmishers, that's what we're gonna call them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't pronounce that to save my life. That's way too many consonants for me in a row. So, yeah, ammunition, they have 14 of the same extremely powerful javelins. Again, very nice armor and morale and all that kind of stuff, but are you ever going to be able to pay back a thousand talents on these guys? That would be difficult. You would need to slaughter two cavalry units in order for that to be worth it. Possible, because their javelins are very strong, but how are you going to protect them when you've spent a thousand on them? Good luck. Um, so I like the idea, the flavor that you're trying to make the Abdanians uh, special skirmish capability. But the pricing on these units is very forbidding, very forbidding. Um, and again, you've got the same offering in Cavalry. There are a couple more Skirmish Cav as well, but they suffer from the exact same problem that the Round Shield Raiders do, except even worse. The Round Shield Raiders at least are fortunate enough to get the heavy designation. Although these Cavalry start to carry even more of the high damage Javelins, they cost more and they are light and light with less health. 
So they do get a little more speed, but it's only 80. Still very catchable by almost any cavalry unit in charge speed. Um, so again, nice try, but wasted in multiplayer. Will be quite fun in campaign, but again, wasted in multiplayer. They have Wolfhound Spearmen and Sighthound Spears, so extra dog units. Nothing too special about either of these. Um, again, probably more fun in campaign than in multiplayer, so yeah, that's the Abdanians. And then let's hit the Picks is our last one. These guys are going to offer more Axe Infantry. And, and from a general standpoint, they have these Followers of Morgon. These guys are pretty interesting. They can go Berserk. They have... Uh, frenzy, rapid advance, not a particularly high attack, but a pretty tanky unit. And the fact that they can go berserk and they scare other units can be potentially helpful. Uh, they do have black blades and Pictish swordsmen as unique um, melee units. Pictish swordsmen uh, boast some very nice attack stats and a decent charge. Uh, health is somewhat mediocre, but at 108 morale, these guys are near unbreakable. Um, same thing with the black blades, they will fight darn near to the last man. Uh, again, not a particularly large health, but uh, very offensive units, these two, but also quite expensive. And again, how are you going to keep them safe from enemy cavalry? So if I bring the Sassanids, tell me how you're going to keep your Pictish Swordsmen from getting uh, Pushteg Bond trampled um, by my Sassanids. Or I could save some money and just Persian Cataphract trample you with these guys. Tell me what you're going to do about it. Very little. <laughs> you're going to watch while your guys get trampled. So again, that's going to be the problem with the uh, the Celtic factions. They got some in very interesting units. It's going to be very hard for them to use them, though. So all those units are the same, but Pictish Berserkers as a special offering, a slightly better light axe Berserker unit that the Picts have access to, and then Pictish Axemen, um, 108 morale again on these guys. So they will fight to almost the last man, and that is pretty much it. All the other units are pretty much the same. So that is your Celtic culture pack. Um, I am not going to show you any of those units now. This is just more of an overview. I will start to throw them in uh, in some multiplayer battles, though do expect to probably see me getting killed as I use these guys in multiplayer as they are not real sturdy. Um, and eventually we will run a campaign with one of them as well. If you have any thoughts about the campaign as to which one you think would be best, I'm not taking an official vote, but you can leave your thoughts. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed it. Air of Carthage, signing off for now.